Look, there's no way around it. Robots are sick. And by extension, prosthetics are pretty sick. Over the past couple of years, the prosthetic industry has advanced so much. And there's tons of hobbyists putting their own designs on the internet. So all you really need to build one is a basic understanding of programming and a 3D printer. The world of prosthetics honestly is looking so promising for people with disabilities. But what I'm really interested in is not helping people like you should do with a prosthetic. No, I want to give one to somebody as a prank. So my wife's dad is a giant ripped dude, super into working out, super fit. But recently he's in the attic, falls off a ladder, and and lacerates his tendon. Is lacerates a word? Lacerates. I think it's a word. Obliterates his tendon. Tendon, gone. Ability to lift weights, gone. Dreams of competing in the Olympics, gone. Now looking at me, you can tell I obviously don't go to the gym, but I know lots of people that do, and when they can't go to the gym, it makes them sad. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make him a new arm that he can use until his gets better. Is it actually gonna be useful? No. Is it gonna be funny? Yes. Now one of the biggest obstacles when it came to this project was using things that I already had. I'm sure this won't get posted for a while, but Christmas is in about a week. And my wife's parents told us about a week ago that they don't want us to give them anything that we have to buy. Luckily I already had some skin colored 3D printing filament. I saw it on Amazon and then bought it several months ago without having a project in mind. And because I didn't have a project in mind, the only thing I could think of to print once I got it was something phallic. I'm also using a knockoff Arduino, some switches, a battery pack, some buttons, all stuff that I already had. Honestly, this is a super simple project for somebody looking to get into robotics. If you have a 3D printer and you want to try something with an Arduino, the code is already out there, the files are already out there, you can really just throw it on the printer and get started. So that's my little encouragement for anybody out there looking to get into this stuff. It's really not that hard once you get started. I know a couple years ago I would have thought this was really intimidating. And really the reason I bring that up is because when I was growing up, I always kind of thought I was the dumb kid. I never really did that well in school. I had a hard time paying attention and I really didn't have like a lot of hope for my own life, I guess, what I was going to do in my life, the kind of job I was going to be able to get, any of that stuff. And then I became interested in engineering. I ended up going to school for engineering. I thought for sure when I started, I was going to fail. But the further I got into it, the more I realized the stuff I had learned in high school was not stuff I was interested in at all. And that's why I didn't do very well. When I started applying myself to building things, being creative, having an outlet for that kind of stuff, it completely changed for me. I'm not going to say I'm like at the top of the class or anything, but I did so much better than I did in high school just because I was applying myself to something I actually enjoyed. And I think there's probably a lot of people in the same boat where they can look at some of the projects that I do or that I've done on the channel, whether it be the drivable bunk bed or the airsoft turret, I don't know, any of the other stuff, even this. And I'm sure there's somebody that probably thinks that they can't do something like this. Maybe you don't know how to solder. Maybe you don't know how circuits work. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have never programmed anything, including an Arduino. Maybe you've never done 3D printing, whatever it might be. I would just say if you're interested in stuff like this to give it a try it may end up that you're better at it than you think at least that's what happened with me throughout this whole YouTube thing there's been a lot of projects where I start the project and I don't have the skill set at the beginning to follow through with it and I have to learn a ton during the whole process take the drivable bunk bed for example at the beginning of that project I had no idea how to weld I didn't have a welder I didn't really have a lot of tools I had to go buy a welder watch a ton of videos and it was a big learning curve honestly and I'm still not that great at welding but I can weld stuff another good example is the next project I'm working on. I'm not going to spoil or anything, but since we got snow on the ground, I want to play with fire. I'm going to be messing a lot with rocket engines from Hobby Rockets. Now, I don't know anything about rocketry. I think it's really cool, but I've never done it before. I've never known anybody that did it before, but that's part of the fun of it is I get to dive into these subjects that I'm interested in and I have no prior knowledge of and in my own way, become an expert on that to be able to complete a project. I'm really excited about that video. Make sure you subscribe so that you can catch that video when it comes out. If that video doesn't come out and you never hear from me again, maybe it didn't go as well as I was hoping. Anyway, to finish out this TED talk, I just wanted to encourage anybody who is thinking about getting into this stuff to just take the jump and start on a simple project like this, even if it's only just to prove to yourself that you can do it. There we go. <laughs> So he didn't actually lose his arm. It's just incapacitated for a little bit. And he honestly, he doesn't even wear his brace. This, I designed this to work with his brace. The little metal slot is supposed to fit right here and the rubber is supposed to like hold it in place. Whatever, he doesn't even wear it. But it can also strap around the arm. He has a sling and everything he's supposed to wear too. But this is essentially how it's supposed to work. I don't know, it's not ideal. I don't really know how it's supposed to hold on to anything. Um, I was thinking about putting a glove. Maybe I'll put a glove on it. 
I just put this glove on it from Harbor Freight. Please sponsor me. I was thinking about putting rubber pieces on the hands, but it wasn't like grippy enough to actually do anything. This I think is gonna work a lot better and it looks cool. <laughs> Okay, not perfect. Okay. Okay, that's not as bad as you would think. Almost drill a hole. Oh, right, that's pretty impressive. That's a heavy drill. All right, not too bad. I actually think this works better than I, than I thought it would. It's supposed to be more of a gimmick than anything else, but the grip strength on it is, is pretty sweet. So I am gonna stop filming and uh, wrap it. Can you help me open this? Okay, help me. There we go. Wow! What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, it's a prosthetic arm. I got you a new arm. <laughs> That's so cool. Did you make it? Yeah. Oh, wow. you did? Holy cow. What the heck? <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. <laughs> so weird. <laughs>